Good to see you again. Good to see you. Long time no see. It has been a long time. So please have a seat. Okay, I ask you the same question. Um, I think we are in the same age. Because um, I am one year younger than you. You mm -hmm. were forty-five now. I'm forty-five oh, now. Okay, so I'm forty-four. Yeah. And I remember that when I was sixteen, I, st I still playing was I was like junior. And you were seventeen, mm -hmm. and you won the French Open. Mm -hmm. I saw that on TV. You. You were 17, right? 17. Okay. okay. Yeah. You remember, or, or, or of course you remember that tournament. Yeah, I, it was um, it was interesting because I know a lot of my uh, contemporaries that I had playing playing juniors with. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they were they were all playing the junior French Open. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it was uh, it was interesting to to still um, to still be in the you know in the men's draw and uh, here my friends are are playing you know the second week in the in the junior French Open. So. Oh, you were playing junior tournament as well. On the same year? No, well, no. Well, I'll, not the same year. I was already pro. Ah, okay. Yeah, I actually turned pro already uh -huh. um, a little before my 16th birthday. So I'd uh -huh. already been on tour for about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just kind of interesting because, you know, normally I would be playing in the uh, in the junior, junior event. Junior, yes. Um, as opposed to the to the main draw. So, uh, wow. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it was kind of shock for me. And I was, you know, I got a lot of... Um, how to say um, energy, because we are same Asian. Mm -hmm. You are American, but in Chinese American. Yeah. And I was very like in a big big shock because when I was junior, I wasn't think about somebody like Asian people can yeah. win the Grand Slam tournament. Yeah. And yeah. you show it, you know, and then yeah. I was like a shock. Yeah, actually, I remember what was what was really interesting actually back then was that. Um, uh, the amount of Asian players mm -hmm. were so few. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was, you know, obviously we we're always, you know, watching how, how each other did. Mm -hmm. You know, you obviously had, had an unbelievable career. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Kimiko was around the same time, yes. did very, very well. Um, you know, there was really only a handful of other players, mm -hmm. you know, Parador and Shri Japan, uh, Cecil Mamma was a little bit younger, but there really weren't a whole lot of yes. Asian players. Um, so obviously now, you know, everything has changed. Yes. Um, you know, a lot of the Chinese players uh, mm -hmm. have done very well. Um, you have a lot of young, mm -hmm. you know, Japanese um, players, um, both men and women, doing very, very well. So, um, yeah, it's encouraging to, to be able to see. And, um, you know, I, I feel like, you know, for our generation, I feel like it's, um, you know, it was, uh, we kind of jump-started, I think, yeah. a, a lot of the interest, um, you know, here in the Asia-Pacific Rim. And, and um, it's nice to be able to see the younger generation not only playing on tour, but, but doing very, very well. And you reached the world number two, and then I think you reached also Grand Slam final three times, five uh, times, four times, uh, twice at the French Open, uh, once at the U.S. Open, and uh, once at the Australian Open. Okay, which tournament did you like best? I mean, the whichever one I won. Um, oh, French. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course you did. Um, you know, I. I you know, what's nice about the Grand Slams is that, you know, and you know as well as I do, every, every Grand Slam has a different flavor. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the Australian Open is, is very relaxed. Mm -hmm. uh, people are super nice. Um, in certain ways, it doesn't really feel like a Grand Slam. Yes, um, yes. So it's, it's, you know, very, very well liked by the players. Um, you know, the French Open is very, um, you know, it's very passionate. It's mm -hmm. very dramatic. Yes. Um, you know, it's very... Uh, um, they, they love to be able to see players express mm -hmm. their emotion, whether they're happy or whether they're upset, whether they're frustrated. Um, and also players lounge. I mean, the food was very, very good yeah, in French. Yeah, yeah, and um, and then Wimbledon, obviously, everything's very traditional, yes. very proper. Um, you know, very different feel over there. And mm -hmm. then the U.S. Open is just, you know, it's just crazy sometimes, especially <laughs> at the night matches. Yes. Um, you know, just so much excitement. There's always something going around. You know, people walking around. Um, you know, just such a different feel over mm -hmm. there. And, um, yeah, I think it's just been, been so great to, to be able to experience so many different, you know, yeah. so many different feels on, on the tour. Mm -hmm. And uh, and obviously, you know, being able to play worldwide in so many different countries around the world is uh, is just a fabulous experience. Yes, I, I remember once when I was playing French, and I played against a French player, Tosia, mm. and I lost in third, but I played like more than three hours. Mm -hmm. And after the match... I went back to the hotel and I saw your brother mm -hmm. and Carl told me, and he said to me, like, you should play more smart. 
But you know, smart means in Japanese, you have to lose your weight. Is oh. So I, I was thinking, you know, your brother said to me, you must lose your weight. Oh, definitely and I not. was like, oh my God. <laughs> no, definitely and not. That, that, and that time. I, I will was, tell him I, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Next time I see him, I will tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because that time when I saw your brother, I was eating ice cream. Oh. So that, that was a very bad timing. Oh. And I said, oh my God. But in, after that, I went to back to my room and then uh, with a dictionary. It's yeah. smart. Oh, okay. Smart yeah. means, you know, I, I need to use my head more. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think that was probably a natural, a natural um, thing for him to think about because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm not the biggest player out there. So I have to, to be able to play intelligently. Mm -hmm. um, I have to figure out my opponents, know their strengths, know their weaknesses, and be able to play, play smart tennis. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it was uh, such a, a key part of, uh, of how I played and, and how I won matches. Mm -hmm. um, so I think maybe in, in that aspect, I think it was, it was already ingrained in, in him in, uh, in how we're, we're trying to get around you know, winning matches and stuff. So. <laughs> okay, so when he was coaching, you were the player, and now you were the coach. Mm -hmm. So when you, know, uh, when you were coaching, what do you think the most important things um, to teach somebody as a coach? I think it's... Um, I think it's a combination of things. Um, I think it's uh, it's what you're teaching, mm -hmm. but I think it's also how your how your player is learning. Oh. Um, because if you're teaching all the right things, but mm -hmm. you don't communicate it in the mm -hmm. right way, you, you can't accomplish your goal. Yes. Um, if you're teaching the wrong things, but you're communicating it well, obviously it's not going to work either. Mm -hmm. So you know, I think I think it's it's important that you understand mm -hmm. your player, you understand, you know, his or her personality. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously for me, you know, I still have a lot of things to learn about Kay. Mm -hmm. um, he's not the, actually the easiest person to get to know because, mm -hmm. um, because he's more on the quiet side, mm -hmm. more, more reserved side. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times I have to actually ask him questions mm -hmm. in order to be able to understand some mm -hmm. things. Um, but the wonderful thing about Kay is that he learns so quickly. Really? Um, and from a coach's standpoint, uh, what I would normally have to teach somebody over the mm -hmm. course of like, you know, a month, mm -hmm. he can pick up within a few days. Um, wow. I just have to continue to remind him, um, you know, periodically to continue to, to work to keep to keep implementing those things. But if I tell him to make a different change here and there, within a few shots, he mm -hmm. can do it. Um, and so that's part of, you know, what's been so exciting to, to, to work with him. Wow. Um, but, uh, you know, but still, obviously, we've got a long ways to go. And, and I think that um, his, te his best tennis, I feel like, is still mm -hmm. ahead of him. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, hopefully coming off of this injury and, and getting the proper, you know, rehabilitation, um, you know, kind of looking at 2018 as really kind of starting, you know, the, sec the second half of his yeah. career, mm -hmm. uh, which would be great. And, um, you know, I'd love to be able to see him, uh, you know, reach his full potential. That's good to hear. It, it isn't any different between uh, before the injury and after the injury, okay? I mean, I think that, um, I think it was pretty frustrating. Um, you know, I think when he had the injury, um, mm -hmm. you know, we knew the injury obviously was, was quite serious. Um, I think the injury actually, if, if there was a good time to come, <laughs> Uh, I think it actually came at a good time. Okay. Um, and, I th and the reason why I say that is because I think that um, this break that Kay has had, I think it was, was good for him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's been playing some, some unbelievable tennis, obviously, obviously over the, the past few years, uh, playing a lot of tennis, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of tough matches along the way. And, and this break, I think, has really um, given him the, the rest that he needs. Mm -hmm. Um, but also has given him, you know, a lot of time to be able to work on his body, mm -hmm. um, and he would never ever have this time, you know, if he was, you know, continuing to yeah, play on tour. That's right, yeah. um, and you take examples of, of Rafa coming off mm -hmm. the, off of injury, Roger yes, coming off of injury, right. uh, even Madison Keys mm -hmm. and Sloan Stevens, you know, nine months ago neither of them were playing, and here they are, they're fighting for the, you know, for the U.S. Open title. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, there are a lot of positives if mm -hmm. there are anything to, to, you know, if you were to look at it, and I think in the proper perspective. And, um, you know, I think Kay can, uh, can do well. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I think that um, hopefully have a little bit of a different mindset uh, coming into the new year and, uh, and hopefully be even, even more excited and more thankful mm -hmm. uh, for the position that he has to, uh, to play tennis at this level. That's great. What is your, uh, you and Kay's target so far right now, you know, for the first tournament or 
the whole next year or next grand sum or what? I think for for us at this point is is to try to get 100 percent healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's to been get great. Ready. Yeah, I think that's first things first. Um, I think it's going to be important not to uh, not to rush mm-hmm. um, the comeback. Um, you know, I think if there's a situation where obviously we'd love to be able to start in in January, that's the goal. Mm-hmm. But if for some reason, you know, he's not able to to go out there and play play at 100 percent, um, you know, I'm. I'm absolutely going to be the first person to tell him, no, we need to wait. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it makes no sense to start, you know, if you're able to play at 95% or, or 90%. Yeah. You know, the guys are so good now mm-hmm. um, that you really need to be able to start off and, and play at 100%. And, and with, with this kind of an injury um, being so serious, the last thing you want to do is, mm-hmm. is re-injure it mm-hmm. and make it worse and then start yeah. that whole healing process over That's again. Right. So, um, you know, so you have to be really smart about it, to be wise about it. And um, you know, first things first is to get 100% healthy. That's great. Okay, let's talk about the next year. Um, you know, in men's side, did you see the men uh, ATP finals? Uh, I saw some of the results of the ATP mm-hmm. finals. Um, did you see the you know, match? I, I really think that's the um, you know this whole second half of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, I think that uh, obviously a lot of guys took advantage of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gregor has been playing, you know, great tennis at the yeah. beginning of this year and obviously finished very well. Um, but I feel like, you know, the tournaments that toward the end of the year, I mean, so many guys were not playing. Yeah. Um, you know, Andy is not playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Novak's not playing. Stan's not playing. Mm-hmm. Kay's not playing. Milos is not playing. Um, and then Rafa got hurt in the in the year-end final. I mean, there's so many guys... Um, and the, the draws are so wide yeah. open. Um, you know, I just feel like going into 2018, uh, you know, maybe you have Grigor Dimitrov at number three in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I think once the draw comes out, people are going to look, where's Novak? Yeah. You know, where's Stan? You know, where's Andy? Where's uh, Kay? Where's Kay? Yeah. You know, I mean, they're going to look at where they are. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and they know that, um, you know, all those guys know how to win. Mm-hmm. Uh, they know how to win big, big tournaments. Um, and, um, you know, there's certainly going to be a, you know, a lot of pressure on, uh, on some of those other guys. Mm-hmm. And Grigor actually, actually going to be, a, is actually going to probably feel one, probably some of the most pressure mm-hmm. because he won in Brisbane last year, yeah. uh, got to the semis of the mm-hmm. Australian Open. Um, obviously, number three is his highest ranking, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, all these guys are going to come back hungry. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be a very interesting um, you know, first half of the season, I think. Oh, okay. Let's watch out. Okay, so I think we have to talk about rackets. Um, I heard that you were, you were using the green one. I was using the the, uh, the smaller head green. Bird, oh, okay. Uh, earlier in the year. How was it? Uh, it was very good. Um, it's actually quite powerful. Uh-huh. Um, and then I made a change to that yellow version, actually, oh. the 3.0. Um, CV 3.0. Mm-hmm. This is a, the, the one I was using is the um, CV 3.0 Tour. Mm-hmm. Um, so that is a little bit of a bigger head. Okay. Um, this one has a little less power, mm-hmm. but um, but better spin and and, uh, and a little oh. more control. Okay. So and a little bit easier to uh, to generate um, um, spin because of the. I feel like it's a little softer because of a little bit of bigger head size. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, but still, you know, very powerful racket. So. And how was the green one? Is it is it good for the power player or? For for somebody who hits like you, uh-huh. like like flat and very through, mm-hmm. the green version is, is really very easy for okay, you. Okay, I'm gonna change there's my racket. There's no there's no question about it. Oh, okay. Um, you know, for for you that you know, hits very flat, very very powerful, very deep, uh-huh. um, the green version is going to be going to be good for you. Uh, I don't know what, what size head you normally use, um, but... Uh, oh, the big one or the small one? Yeah, this one, there's a, there's a 100 version, uh-huh. um, and then there's a 97 version. This is, this, this is smaller one. Oh, okay. So you were yeah. using... I was using the smaller Smaller version. one, this one. Well, actually, they didn't have uh, a 100 version. Oh, okay, so this one is new. Yeah, this one's new for oh, 2018. Oh, okay. So... So did you try already this one? Yeah, I got a chance oh, to do okay. it today. Actually, feels pretty good. Wow. So. Okay. okay, I'm gonna ask you today. <laughs> okay, um, I think the racket is improved every year. Oh yeah, there's no and, question. Yeah, and yeah. you remember when we were playing like 20 years ago? Do you think is a 
the big difference? Oh, there's a huge difference now. Um, I think if anything, the the biggest change I think in in tennis um, has been the combination of the rackets mm -hmm. and the strings. There's no question about it. Um, because the guys now, uh, both men and women, can mm -hmm. generate um, so much more pace uh -huh. and so much more spin mm -hmm. um, now with the new new technology. So you look at our generation, the, the guys that play on on the Champions Tour, where you know we're using all the old. None of us use the old technology mm -hmm. anymore. So we are we're able to hit now shots that we couldn't hit before. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's like, oh wow, it's whole a whole different dynamic of, of tennis. Uh -huh. um, yeah, and, and um, you know, it's incredible now. Uh, you know, and I think that's what's made certain aspects of the men's game actually mm -hmm. quite difficult. Um, you know, I think that's part of the reason why you know it's been harder for guys to actually get to the net mm -hmm. because balls are coming back so fast with mm -hmm. so much spin okay. um, that it's tough to control anything. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it's probably one of the biggest changes is, is definitely the rackets and the, and the strings. Those are so good now. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, can I ask one question? How many rackets did you use, I mean, you bring to the court when you were playing tournament? If Three I rivals. was playing a, a two out of three set match, I'd probably have five rackets. Only five? Yeah, two out of three set match. Really? Yeah. Um, and if I was playing a, a, a Grand Slam uh -huh. match, I would have probably maybe seven to eight rackets. But seven to eight rackets being that if I broke a string mm -hmm. or, or after I was done with mm -hmm. my racket, I would send it up to my brother. Oh. Yeah. So sometimes I would get, I would get rackets strung during the match. Really? Um, yeah. And I would have to change sometimes because, like, you know, you play in Paris, for example, uh -huh. in the morning... Yeah. It's maybe cloudy mm -hmm. and cold. Yep. By the afternoon, it's mm -hmm. sunny and warm. So um, you know, so I'm always making you know making modifications. Um, but I, uh, but when I actually was going through rackets, mm -hmm. because I liked a racket that was very stiff. Mm -hmm. So obviously, the more you play with it, the fibers start to break yeah. inside. Um, I went through so many rackets a year. Oh, um, okay. I went through probably, I went through probably about 125 rackets a year. Really? Yeah. So maybe for one tournament, and you change the racket, or I would change rackets. Probably, I want to say maybe a couple of matches, four, four or five times out of the year. But oh. I would start to rotate them. Really? Yeah. I thought you were, um, uh, you were carrying like twenty rackets because yeah. you always carried a big, big bag. Yeah. No. Not that what was no. inside? Uh, clothes, changing clothes, shoes. Um, How many shoes is? I would, I would I always have one extra pair. Oh, so you have two? Uh, one. one I'm wearing, mm -hmm. one that's in my bag. Um, then I have, I don't know how many extra shirts, you know, so I have maybe like, you know, five, five seven extra shirts, depending on, on you know, when I'm, which tournament I'm playing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've got stuff to, to eat, snacks. You know, whatever. <laughs> Snacks um, like a banana. Yeah. So I mean, it, yeah, a lot of lot of different things. Okay. Last question is not it's not a question. Uh, please give us uh, some message for the Japanese fans to the camera. Okay. Is that okay? Take time. Or you can say you can say something in Japanese. You know, Kay's taught me nothing. <laughs> nothing? I think he likes that I don't speak Japanese. Why? Because, because when he's around his Japanese friends and I'm around, uh -huh. um, he'll, ah. he'll say stuff like, uh, like uh, and they'll laugh. I'm like, <laughs> what did he say? He says, oh, I can say anything because he doesn't understand any Japanese. Oh, uh, but I keep he, thinking he, to myself, you know, maybe, I should, maybe I should learn some Japanese. So. Yeah, I, I can teach you. <laughs> um, okay. Um... じゃあ最後に日本語で言いますね。じゃあ最後にマイケルさんから日本の皆さんにメッセージをお願いしたいと思います。お願いします。あ、あ、I'm um, Stan, uh, Milos, um, you know, it's going to be a very interesting year uh, on the men's side. Um, Rafa and Roger obviously have had a, 
uh, an incredible 2017. Um, so 2018, I think, is going to be a very interesting year. Um, I'm hoping that uh, that Kay will, um, you know, really have another breakthrough uh, in 2018, and um, you know, and uh, come out uh, being healthy and and playing some great tennis. And um, you know, I'm 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 always excited for uh, you know for for what's in store. Yeah. Um, obviously, I'm excited to to start another year with uh, uh, with Dunlop and Shrixon. Um You know, the, the rackets that they have, uh, you know, are, are incredible. Um, a lot of different varieties and and uh, to suit a lot of different styles of, of players and um, you know players are been doing really really well with mm-hmm. uh, you know with their rackets um, you know a lot of the Japanese players uh, obviously Kevin Anderson you know getting the finals of the US Open last That's year right. and um, yeah there's a uh, you know a lot of things to uh, to look forward to yeah. and I think 2018 is going to be a going to be a great year um, and um, you know I'm sure the Japanese fans are, are looking forward to uh, to to seeing a lot of Japanese uh, player success. Thank you, thank you, yeah. Mark, and good luck to you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.